Joint practices with the Browns are officially done and the Birds brought it on day two. Jalen Hurts delivered strikes all over the field. Reed Blankenship might actually be a ghost. And Jalen Carter leveled an all-pro guard. Sidney Brown also started a fight, for real. And Devontae Smith is unguardable. We already knew that. But first, let's run it. What's up guys, for those that are new to the channel, I'm Josh and I cover the birds. All right, the last day of joint practices was filled with all kinds of emotion with the originally scheduled 5 p.m. kickoff pushed up due to expected rain, but that didn't stop guys like Derek Barnett, Teron Jackson, and Milton Williams from getting out there early. Not really surprising because we've seen the extra work that Milton Williams has put in over the off season, which is probably why Josh Sweat has one breakout candidate in mind. Milton, Milton Williams, he a dog, man. He just working, he just, you know what I mean? He got that chip and he just, you know, that's just what I see. I see, I see Miller. I actually really love to hear that because Williams has been kind of quiet throughout camp, but based on several reports, the third year player is looking poised to significantly impact the D-line. Another guy in that category is the dancing bear Jordan Davis, who I think all of us at this point have heard him being listed as a potential breakout candidate. And the mammoth in the middle has been reportedly playing in nickel fronts, where he was excellent at Georgia, like Honest NFL points out, so he could be used like Hakeem Hicks. Honestly, I'm not even sure you need to with this deep of a D-line, yet I love to hear the progress he continues to make, especially given JD's recent comments of dealing with the imposter syndrome last season and constantly having to remind himself that he's here for a reason, that the Eagles picked him for a reason, and that he's here to stay. Thankfully, Davis said he's in a much better place this season and feeling a lot more comfortable, and even several of the vets have noticed the different mindset from the 23-year-old. He's been playing, you know, every down now, you know, not just first and second, and, you know, we expect that of him. Uh, you know, he came in last year and you know, got his feet wet. Now we expect him to be a three down, a three down player, which he's enjoying it. Always a great sign. And I'm excited to see the role JD plays, but what do you think? Do you see Davis being a three down player or still mostly rotating with the other D linemen? And also who's your breakout candidate on the defense this year? As with most things, it really comes down to staying healthy. Quite frankly, the birds have been fairly fortunate in that category. Although the list did get larger ahead of the final day of joint sessions against the Browns with Britton Covey and Quez Watkins still rehabbing the hamstring injuries, Patrick Johnson and the ankle, Landon Dickerson, who suffered a foot injury on Monday and not entirely sure of the timetable. However, most reports seem positive. And then Hassan Reddick, a surprising scratch, apparently dealing with a thumb injury. At least it's not a long-term injury, yet ESPN's Tim McManus alluded to the fact that the hammer could miss the rest of the preseason. At least he's not expected to miss the rest of the regular season, though. I mean, I'd like a little better news than that, because remember, Reddick already missed the start of camp with a groin injury and now having to take care of a thumb issue. I'm ultimately not too worried, though, because it gives Hassan time to get right, and he's a pro's pro, so I doubt there will be any rust from him, maybe a tiny bit, but not really anything to be concerned about. But curious what you guys think. Let me know in the comments. I guess the optimistic way of looking at it is that it gives more guys the chance to prove themselves. And boy, did the whole team need to do that after the way the first joint practice went. I just don't think we ever got into a groove. We didn't make plays. We corrected it this morning, and we're, we're looking to get better from it today. I kind of felt bad for the Browns after hearing Sirianni's presser because Jalen almost undoubtedly only had one response. That's all I needed for him to do that, and it, it became personal with me. All right, it probably wasn't anything like that, but remember, this dude is now with the Jordan brand, so it's not out of the realm of possibility, and add to it the fact that Jalen showed up wearing the absolute fire Chicago ones at camp. Let's just say the intensity was turned up from the beginning, with Hertz firing a strike to AJ Brown over the middle, who went up and made a leaping grab. Notice the shoe game from Swole Batman as well. Still think I'm going with Jalen. Yet, Hertz did have a momentary hiccup, missing Devontae Smith from 10 yards out in seven on sevens, but come on, I'm pretty sure there was a flag or something should have been called. Regardless, Hertz came back to hit Dallas Goddard for a score and then retried the attempt to Smitty because it's just unstoppable. Then Jalen came back to Brown who toasted Lorenzo Burns press coverage on the final play of seven on sevens for a really strong showing. I should also share that backup quarterback Marcus Mariota also had one of his most impressive performances during the same period, finding tight end Jack Stahl who made a really nice grab. And then as Josh Tolentino shared, Mariota orchestrated a nifty throw in traffic to Greg Ward who was able to maintain possession through contact while falling down, which yeah, sounds really great like the bird just swept the floor with the Cleveland stains but not exactly, since based on some of their beat writer reports, it appeared that both teams were very even after 7-on-7, seven seven, with each team making plays on both sides. However, when the team swapped to 11-on-11s, 11 11, it turned into an absolute spanking, where Kenny Gainwell started out as the RB1, first serving as a lead blocker for Hertz, followed by Kenny G getting a handoff and hitting the hole before juking the Browns linebackers out of their shoes and reaching the second level. The Eagles O also served up a good bit of wheel routes for the RBs and a couple different angle routes, which based on reports this entire preseason 
season continues to be really effective. And later, Sirianni and offensive coordinator Brian Johnson got the Browns' head spinning, showing a two running back look with Gainwell and DeAndre Swift lined up in the backfield before handing off to Gainwell, who easily picked up five plus yards, getting running back coach Jamal Singleton yelling, yes sir, KG. I love the creativity and different looks, especially with these kinds of weapons on the offense. And it seemed like today was more heavily involving Kenny G. However, I don't think that ultimately signifies a whole lot, as I keep saying this squad is going to be a running back by committee approach. The defense also made some plays where Reed Blankenship picked off another, yes, another ball from a tipped pass from linebacker Zach Cunningham. And I know you've been counting, but again, that's the second time in the last two practices that he's done that. Yet there was a fight that started afterward. Don't tell me. I know who it was. Okay, surprisingly, it wasn't Derek Barnett who instigated it. In fact, you may not believe this, but it was the rookie Sidney Brown who flat out leveled a Browns player during the return. And then everything got all crazy. That escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Look, this may sound crazy, but I kind of like it, especially seeing the Rook not afraid to light someone up out there. But this didn't just come out of nowhere. According to Dave Zangaro, Brown was also getting a little feisty in special teams drills on Monday, so it wasn't as much of a surprise to see him involved in the scuffle. Okay, which again, I love to hear, but what may have been better was getting a glimpse at Brown's goal for how he wants to be viewed in the league. I want to be a feared player. That's, that's kind of kind of my mindset going into this. I just play with that intensity every single day. I mean. You're gonna connect at some point, and you're gonna feel it. My intention isn't to hurt people, but you know, if you're carrying that football, yeah, I mean, you got it coming for you. Bro, what? I'm fired up. Don't tell me you don't like that. That same type of energy was all over the defense Tuesday, with several media members noticing how fast and physical the birds looked out there, which turned into another scuffle after Kayvon Wallace hit a Browns running back, John Kelly, and took him out of bounds, leading to a Browns personnel member yelling, "Somebody needs to get on 42s." I guess they didn't care too much how physical Kayvon was playing. Unfortunately, it may have gotten a little carried away with a third scrum getting started. And this time, yeah, you guessed it, Derek Barnett was the culprit of the penalty after the play. I knew it. It was only a matter of time. Yes, it's football and emotions are high, but when it comes to Barnett, I feel like he needs to prove to the coaches and himself that he can keep his emotions in check. Otherwise, we're gonna have the same old Barnett, but what do you guys think about hearing Mr. It's Always Him being flagged again? It was kind of hard to believe we didn't hear more about Nolan Smith given Reddick was sitting out with the injury, although it's notable that Nolan got more reps at off-ball linebacker in seven on sevens. And once again, we had a day where the linebackers didn't really do too much outside of Zach Cunningham's good coverage play. In case you're worried about Smith being lined up not at edge, I think you can relax because Desai said multiple times that he's just testing out different looks to see what players can do. Evidenced by James Bradbury even getting some reps at the slot and also a hybrid linebacker role. I feel like I keep saying this after every practice, but Josh Sweat had another big day, running into Deshaun Watson as he was delivering the ball, causing an incompletion, and then later recording a strip sack on Watson, which was right about the time when Jalen Carter flattened Cleveland Browns guard Joel Betonio. By the way, if you don't know why that's a really big deal, Betonio, I'm not really even sure if I'm saying his name right, is a five-time All-Pro. So we're not talking about some no-name here, even though I don't really know how to pronounce his name. I'm sure eventually we're going to get used to this, but it's still crazy that nearly every practice we keep hearing about JC being in the zone and literally unblockable. Speaking of in the zone, while the Eagles D was giving him the business on one field, Jalen Hurts was in another stratosphere, finding AJ Brown who caught Denzel Ward off balance with a clean zip route, creating a ton of separation where Hurts put the ball right on the money for a potential score. We're not sure if it was a score because it was hard to say if he got touched right before the end zone. At this point, Jalen was feeling himself, navigating to connect with Smitty on a corner route and holding the follow through for a bit afterward because, you know, we all like to admire our work sometimes. And after Tuesday's practice, Big Play Slay didn't hold back on the praise for Devontae. Ain't gonna be too much longer we gonna be saying Smitty the uh, best receiver in the league, for sure. It ain't gonna be too much longer. Best receiver in the league? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna put a crazy on, but he's he's got that type of ability to be that, that kind of guy, you know. <laughs> he can continue to keep doing what he's doing and growing as a player, which I know he would. Yeah, it ain't gonna be too much longer they're gonna say that. You know, we're gonna have the base, best two for sure. No arguments there. And like I've said before, I think both wideouts are gonna have a good year, but I feel like Devontae will lead the team in receiving. Remember, he's about to have that dad strength and all. Am I crazy? Is Slay crazy? Let me know in the comments. Obviously, AJ's insanely talented too, and was a part of what many called the play of camp. When Jalen stood in the pocket with the coverage being good, and then directed AJ to go to the corner of the end zone to hit him with a perfect pass from about 25 yards out, leading to the final play for the offense, a two point 
point conversion attempt where Kenny G punched it in right up the middle behind Kelsey and Opeta, which then got the sideline jumping. However, the Browns had one chance to answer as they moved the ball down the field before Reed Blankenship picked off Deshaun Watson again in the back of the end zone and then did a little between the legs dribble with the ball to celebrate. It's crazy how overlooked Reed has been at times, but the ghost now has three interceptions against Watson over the past two days. Safe to say everyone will know his name by the end of the season. And with the pick, the first team easily won the final 11 on 11 period. Although the second team also made plays as Mariota had a nice fade ball to Tyree Cleveland, who continues to seemingly vault his way up the depth chart, going back to him again on the two point try on a sprint out pass to convert. Then on the final play for the second team defense, Josh Job intercepted Kellen Mond to put an exclamation point on day two of joint practices, probably cementing his status if he hadn't already on making the roster. I really don't have to tell you at this point, but just to make sure, the Eagles easily won day two of practice, dominating in all areas, which is awesome to see, especially given the very lackluster effort on the first day. The most exciting element to me, though, was seeing Jalen come out and deliver dimes all over the field. I'm not sure what his official stats were, as I haven't been able to find them, but based on the reports, this had to be one of Jalen's best practices, if not the best. So, I mean, I'll just say it now. I think Jalen needs to wear the Jordan 1s at all times. It's only crazy if it doesn't work, right? Next up for the Birds is a break before taking on the Browns in their preseason game tomorrow, and I wouldn't be surprised if the starters all rest given all the action they've seen the last couple days. Good chance for some of the other guys fighting to make the roster. No live show tonight as Thomas is in Italy, and I'm going to take a break to spend some time with family, but we'll have a recap after the preseason game tomorrow. This has been the Philly Special.